was so going, continue. my friends will leave me, I'll be an outcast, and life will be terrible. And, <laughs> but then I realized that the message was for the world, and not really for me to decide on it, yeah, sort of. Um, but yet it was. I had, I had a choice so whether to do it or not, so eventually I decided if it's going to do good for others, then I'll do it. You know, and you know what? I still have all my friends. So, <laughs> Even though some of them go, you are so weird. But uh, they we don't talk about it because I'm on a bowling league and stuff. And we just don't, I just go on my normal, regular life. So but I need to I need to hang on you on you here and have you to another call. I'm sorry. And so I I'm I'm actually a normal person, so actually I'm your normal person. I'm actually very normal. <laughs> I think. <laughs> At least I think I am. Oh, is that Liney? Yes, yeah, she she was online, but we dropped her somehow. Uh it looks like, oh, and then it, that looks like uh, Rowie also. Yeah, Rowie, yeah. Hey, Sephira. I, Hi. It's some international friends, Greenland and England. And I've been, uh, I've been channeling with people in the Netherlands and England and uh, lots of people in Canada. Saskatchewan. Yeah. Yeah, so it's cool. What did you do before all that? I was, uh, okay, I worked at Nazareth College. I was the environmental services manager at Nazareth College, but they replaced me with two people, so two kids right out of college. But uh, I was in charge of uh, 36 um, housekeepers and floor maintenance and set up crews and all that stuff mm -hmm. so and they changed it they put housekeeping all in right. one department and so set up crews yeah. and so floor cleaning in another properties. so they they separated it and they got rid of me and got two cheap people <laughs> and they got rid of my assistant too and filled his, her position with um, the uh, district managers Nephew. All right, I will, I will, um, Sephira, I will cancel them for now, call you again, and uh, if they call again, I will connect them. Okay. I see Rowie's at the end of the no, Liney's they're, in the middle. Lost. England is... Liney's in, in London, yeah. Yeah, and he's Greenland. And he's Greenland, yes, Freeburg, Greenland. <laughs> we need it. Oh, Sephira, we got your back. Hello. Okay. Hello. There. Can you see them? I will show you. Oh, All right, lady. Hello. Hi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now somebody eight. else is coming. I will let her again. Oh no. I can't oh, stay online know? with you guys as far as video goes. Too many people are on. <sighs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Lainey. Nice to have you. Hello, Lainey. Hello. Lainey. Hi, Lainey. Hello. Oh, beautiful. It's Sophia. All right. Nice to have you. All right, we're starting. Um, we started the recording too. The recording already started. Let me just show everybody. <laughs> Hello, Max here. I'm sitting here on the floor, and we've got lots of guests today. And I don't ask them to introduce themselves on YouTube because I'm not sure everybody wants to have their names on YouTube. Yeah. But we got everybody. The most brave ones sit next to Jim and... Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, wow. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, so what do we start with? Oh, Lani, nice to see your face. Hello. Hello. Beautiful. Is Rowie... Oh, we have a, yeah, daylight there still. Yeah, it's lovely. Nice spring day. So Lani is in UK. She's in South London. South London. I just had an interview with um, with London through video Skype. All right. So what do we start? With? Let me do some introduction. Um, today we have a big uh, crowd uh, of local, real face-to-face -face people, and we invite our usual friends and uh, higher energies, friendly higher energies. We don't invite 
reptilians today because they are tough on gym and uh, after that gym cannot channel more. Uh, we have questions from uh, from people in writing, but because we have so many people live, I don't think we will do any writing questions. But everybody prepare your questions. Uh, general nature, personal nature, and typical questions are, do I have hybrid children up there? And uh, what is my extraterrestrial connections? What's my, uh, uh, am I, am I uh, extraterrestrial hybrid? That, that sort of thing. Or you know, I had an experience, and um, who was that? And should I continue with those guys? Sometimes, it, you know, these beautiful orbs flying in the sky, according to our friends, are reptilians. And these reptilians are in war with our, our secret government. Mm -hmm. And they show, we are not afraid of you, we have technology, we can fly in the sky, and you can do nothing to us. So these beautiful orbs which were hanging over many cities, Moscow, and I think somewhere in the South America, they were like there for a month. I thought these are friendly, but apparently these are not so friendly. All right. Um, yeah, so they originally said they were friendly. Oh, some of them are, but yes. I think the ones which were flying war in the war with our mm -hmm. Earth's secret government, and we didn't know anything about it. any case, uh, everybody is welcome, prepare your questions, and let's see who comes through. Um, you lost your drum? I don't know. Okay. It's, it's somewhere here. I'm sorry that I can't see everybody. Uh, we can see Linus, so I don't know what's wrong. But uh, we have uh, online. We have uh, Sephira and and Linus. Lighting from the case from Arizona. I see Rowie's symbol there. Rowie's gone. He, Rowie's gone, okay. Do you have anything? Oh, yeah. Um, Lakesh recently came, came um, there was a confusion there, and initially we invited all personal questions in writing, but apparently he cannot connect directly to a person just by name. We pronounce the name, and he doesn't remember what he said in the past, and even if he's, he's explained things, he's, he still misses things. So he, there was several predictions which went completely messed up. So he kind of stepped back and said he doesn't have a clear connection. He can speak about things he knows, but he won't say things which he previously was saying about about personal personal questions of different people. But I think he's still good with face to face. He can uh, can connect to. Face to face question. So we'll continue with that and uh, hopefully the quality of predictions and quality of insights will, will increase. We still believe he's a real person and we still love him. <laughs> and other than that, I don't think we have any more introductions. Everybody is welcome and important messages come first. And there was another invitation for mermaids to come and channel, so I will just pass it along. Uh, thanks, everybody. Let's. Uh, Give Jim a couple of minutes to meditate and see who comes through.
Hello. Look at you. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. I cannot stay long today, but I would like to come first. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. You have a lot of people here today. Yes. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, Safira. Yes. Hello. Yes, I see some people I know, yes. And how is everyone today? Great, That's good, that's good. How are you? I am good, thank you. Ah, that's better. I've come to answer some questions, but first want to tell you that the things on your planet were disrupting me quite a bit. I was told by these do and the, the group around your planet that there was an attack on me personally because I had given out information that the reptilians did not like me giving out and so they had uh, sent some disruption. So that still continues to some point because it's long lasting, it lasts for a period of time before it dissipates and so until then I I can only do what I know is absolutely true. So if I do not know the answer to some of your questions it's because I do not know that it's absolutely true and if I do not know that I will not tell you an answer. Does that make sense to you? Yes. But Yes, one-on-one -on -one connections are much better for me, as, as Max has said, because I, can, I am here and I can connect more closely with those people directly around me. Let's start with people who are new. Yes. Like new who wants to yes, tell me your names. <laughs> I'll start. Okay. Yes, I am Lakesh. And you're from? I am a Yes, I'm um, from. And your dimensional structure? I am in the fourth dimension. Okay. But I can move to the third. We have people on our planet that have fourth dimensional lives, which is about 90%. But 10% of our people choose to live third dimensional for reasons that are experimental and uh, educational and things of that nature. And probably some of their curriculum is based in third dimensional uh, history. So. Mm. Okay. Um, I see lights flying over the house, and I have for the last three years. I saw yes. them flying over the house in Canadagua. Um, yes. Are they reptilian? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, there's been much reptilian activity lately because, uh, let me explain something. Um, usually when reptilian, th there are some negative reptilians about these days, and they have gained a little confidence, and I'll tell you why. Um, there was an attack by the reptilians during a very difficult weather period, and when they did, when this happens, these do and Takur and those that are on this ship must take care of the dangers of the weather before they can deal with other things. Because the weather has been become a very, very integral part of what they're doing. You realize how bad the weather has been. There's a a wobble or a warble, we're not sure which. A warble is actually a sound. Did you realize that? A warble is a sound. And a wobble is a motion. One, either to her or someone, said about a wobble or a warble. It might even have been me. I was... I realize that there, this is happening, and it's from the center of the galaxy. When we were exposed to the center of the galaxy, something came through and is causing some commotion with your weather and seismic things. So this is their main thrust, is to take care of these major problems, because they could be a lot worse than they are. 
So, when the attack occurred from the reptilians, it was subtle. And it went on for two hours and, I believe, 17 minutes. But that effect, that two hour and 17 minute attack, was on the mental capacities and how people thought and how they dealt with their lives. And it caused much disruption in the vibrational uh, lift uplifting of their their lives so it caused vibrations to fall and because of that two hour and 17 minute period it lasted for 10 days on earth that's how strong this disruption was even though they cut off the attack the it kept going for 10 days the effects of it does that make sense to you all right and so this is why there was so much disruption. And plus, th they must have had done something with me at about the same time. So, but it, even before then, actually. So, but no one was aware of it until after they stopped that, that two and an hour and 17 minute distraction, di uh, disruption. So, um, oh, I got off topic. But, um, That's okay, I'll bring you back. Yes, bring me back. Okay. The concern is we have a great deal of chemtrail exposure. They li we live at 1,800 yes. feet. Mm -hmm. It is nonstop. And I've read things online that have given people the indication that the galactics are handling the ne most negative cause of the chemtrails. Yes. And I'm concerned about disinformation in all forms and people feeling that they have to do less to do affect change. So the question that is not true, right? Yeah, um, I want to know if the Galactics are interceding and if Harp is still weaponized. Harp is still weaponized. Okay. Um, but um, yes, we were not myself, but these two and their tr group of people do take out some of the chemicals in the atmosphere. However, they cannot do any more than a small amount because this would change future events sure. and because you because of the way that things are happening on the earth they can they cannot change the way that humanity deals with their own problems they can help it some but they cannot actually delve in and stop what's happening or or change history what they're doing is prolonging the agony basically or not agony but prolonging the, the effects that chemtrails will have because they're working to make things better in small degrees where they can. The weather is another story. This was not a prediction, not a, something that was supposed to actually happen. So they are helping with the weather because your initial weather was supposed to be bad but not as severe as it is now because of the interference with the center of the galaxy. Does that make sense to you? No, it, it does. Um, so we do have positive ET presence in the area? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. So the reptilians yes, have do. complete ability to interrupt humans, whatever dimensional capacity they're in, and the, and, the, and the higher dimensional beings have very limited say to what they can do to help us. Well, the, that is true to a point. Let me explain something. They cannot stop a reptilian attack. But once a reptilian attack starts, they can stop it. They never know when it's going to start. They know that they have the equipment to start it. But they cannot do anything to them due to all kinds of agreements and ways that the, the universe is set up, the galactic rules are set up, but they can stop it immediately if they, if they so desire. And they so desire to do that, and they, this is the third attack by the reptilians, but it's the only one that's lasted for any particular length of time. So they, the reptilians were wise to do their attack during a very severe weather period when they were not paying attention so much to them as they were to what was happening he here on the earth and and in the weather scenario they were trying to save as many people from different things as possible so but they do stop they have stopped the other attacks immediately 
So now they are aware that they will try to attack during times when they are working to save humanity. So now they have, they have actually added a, a level of security and protection to us, to you. Okay. What, and me. <laughs> what can I do as a, 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 a multi-dimensional being to help uh, work against the reptile reptilian effects in my area? There's not much you can do to, to, to work against reptilians, but especially when you don't know their nature and you don't know where they are. And, uh, there's, but the thing that you can do is just protect yourself and your family. You can cover yourself with the wet like you could do more meditation. Meditation is so valuable to the earth right now. It connects you as light workers and it connects you as souls. Um, and that is a very strong and positive thing to do. And and the the higher the vibration of mankind, the less power they will have over you. Because there is fourth dimensional energy now loosed upon the earth, and you can read more about what fourth dimensional energy is now, and it does affect the way that you can help yourself. You will be able to integrate it into your meditations if you can actually feel it or know what it is. Yes. Does it help to send them love, the reptilians? I mean, does it help to just do that? Being that I really don't know them that well, I, I don't know. Perhaps it does. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sending love to anyone is always helpful. I don't care who they are. <laughs> or where they are, but sending love out always reaches someone. Please continue with questions. One moment. Okay. I invite new people to yes. come with their questions. Yes. Right. I'm not really sure what to ask. I'm Annie. Hi. Annie, thank you. Um, I'm new to this. Very good. Colleen's my sister. She introduced me to most of this. So, uh, very good. The only, I guess the only question I have is about my son. He's very special. Um, Colleen has, has uh, introduced me as very special. And I just uh, wasn't sure if he's connected um, to more than just this earth. He's, uh, what is his name? Dominic. What is his age? He's almost three. He speaks to you of other things, does he not? Sometimes, yeah. He has been visited. Mm -hmm. He, there are many children in this day and age of your earth pattern that are being visited and are at the beginnings of telepathy already. His heart chakra is wide open. This is the beginning of his telepathy, is to, to bloom through the heart chakra. His solar plexus chakra is not yet developed, but will become a great destiny. There is a great destiny within there. So, as you can see already, he is more knowledgeable about things of energy than others. He sees the energy. He sees the colors. The colors are what he sees on the chakras. They come through him. He's walked with the elders, so I'm going to jump in here for a second. What can we do as his family to assist him in fulfilling his destiny? Listen to what he says. Listen to words, and you may not understand them.
But yet, if he realizes that you will be able to listen, he will continue to grow. Because one day you will understand what he has to say. But right now, listen and say, thank you for telling me that. Because this will encourage him to move forward in his growth as a, a light worker. There are so many children that are destined to become great light workers in this age. They are special children. Max has a special child. But yes, I can see that he is already aware of more things than you even know. Mm -hmm. And the question she could ask would be which alien DNA does he have? What alien connection does he have? I am not at liberty to tell you that right now. But I will tell you sometime later when he is able to understand what DNA that he is relating to. Physically taken? No, he was visited, not taken. Is he regularly visited? What? Is he regularly visited? Three times. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know he's been visited. And we know that he's from a very high dimensional place. Yes, his fourth dimensional energy is very high for someone of his age. Yeah, they, they were trying actually to pull back on some of that energy because it can be very confusing for a child, so they did pull back on some of that energy that might be more confusing and more, it would seem more like a psychotic episode where it's actually an episode of uh, transformation. But you might have seen some of that. We'll work on his chakras and help him with that. When they're young, they're not as open and as developed. Yes. One more question and I'm done. What is my galactic lineage? You are Pleiadian. By lineage. The next question. I'm sorry with the hands. <laughs> it's just that I, in, in the human body, there's tendency for my short little hands not to reach all the way out. So they sort of hang. Barbara? Here you go. My name is uh, Barbara. Yes, Barbara. I have met you before, Barbara. yes. Yes. February 17th, between the hours of 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., I was visited. Yes. Who was it? Or, or what, what did you I see? Did? Let, me, let me ask you some questions before I okay. take, give you some. In this period of time, did you see the, the, the visitor? I've been seeing things in my apartment, yes. Yes. What, did, were, they, were they grays? No, this is more like a little... Almost like a snake, black snake. Mm. I don't know what that is. <laughs> One moment, please. <laughs> oh, I see. Like a cat? No, I'm saying like a tail. The cat like a tail. Like the way it lizard. Moves. A lizard? Yeah. A plant. <laughs> you're, yes, you're not seeing the entire creature, yes. There, yes, you were visited, yes. You were not seeing the entire creature, and so what you saw was just energy patterns. It, it was more of an energy pattern, and it was Yil. Yeah. But it was an energy pattern that you saw, and not, not a snake or anything like that. It was an energy pattern. But um, they were checking you out for... You have certain disabilities in your body that they were looking at and um, actually making some improvements with. I, I can tell. Yes. They were actually doing a house call. House call. <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah, yellow is the type of gray hybrids. They are gray, they are essentially gray, gray hybrids. They were visiting your abdomen area and doing some experimental work to see if it would help your condition in some small ways. <laughs> yes. Did you notice a difference? I, I have. Good. I kind of figured that was what was going on. If I have um, one more question. Yes. Um, from a previous channel, I was told that I'm a hybrid. Yes. What DNA or what race of hybrid for killing me? No, you, the Yu Yil have come to you because you are from the Yu Yil. The, there is some hybrid Yu Yil in you, and they were checking to see if that hybrid part actually caused the problem within you. And therefore, they were trying to perhaps correct it a little bit for your comfort. But you do have Yu Yil within you. Yes. More question? Oh, I saw it. I don't really know what to ask. I'm going to listen. <laughs> you are Janice, yes. I am. You may ask whenever you like. Thank you. Andromedan. Vril is an Andromeda. I've been doing some research for you. Well, this is my first time here. I don't really know much about metaphysics. I was reading the website and I was interested, so I just came to see what it was all about. Welcome. You don't have any specific questions? I don't know what type of question mm -hmm. I can ask for you, what's your extraterrestrial, what's her extraterrestrial connection? What's your One name? moment. Carol. 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 That's a, one moment. <laughs> you are also Blue Pleiadian connected. Blue Pleiadian? Yeah. That's the first person we know Blue Pleiadian connected. But you guys don't do hybridization program. How she can be connected? She's connected. She's not hybrid. Oh, spiritually? Yes. She's actually connected through visitation from many centuries ago. Visitation? Yeah. But she is still connected. There are still, whenever the, anyone is connected, they remain connected. So, that is the way it is. Anything about spiritual possum life? Spiritual possum life? Not possum. Path in life. Oh, past life. Not past life. A path. A path? A way in life. Anything oh, about oh, oh. His accent. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yes, she has a path, but I am not allowed to illuminate it because she must do that first. Then I can tell her more about it. You're cryptical. I am cryptical because I must be. Otherwise, I get in trouble. I I remember uh, you yeah, before. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. Have I ever been visited by aliens? Yes. Or? Yes, you have. One time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. One time you were visited, and you remember it in some ways. Yeah. Scary. No. <laughs> it was scary, and that's why they didn't visit again. Because they didn't want to frighten you. They did not want you to see them as something they were not. They were not there to frighten you. They were there to actually send you a small communication about the future which was okay because it was not a main thing but it was something that would make you a little happier it involved a relationships and i believe that uh, you have gotten that message and are moving forward yes. so that was the only time then there was once yes okay so I was wondering, do you think I would be able to have children in this life? Or do I have children up in? You will have children in one of those lives. If not one, the other. Okay. 
it depends on your progression. Okay. Oh, Lainey, uh, I think you can... I will put you on speaker if you, if you could hear hello. you. Hello. Ah, Lainey, hey. hello. Hello. Good to see hey. you again. I've got one question at the moment. Yes. Um, it's about my son William again. Yes. Um, I wanted to know who were the ones that visited him. Ah, he was visited by two species. Okay. Uh, the first was Pleiadians, and the second was a single Yuyil that was not part of Grukfrignir, but a part of the Light Workers Federation. So he was visited by two different alien species, but more than more than once. I think he had three visitations or four, perhaps. Okay, because I asked him about it, and um, about being one of them, or well, the one that he remembered was like a baby alien, and he drew, drew a little picture of, of an alien. Yes, yes. Is, is, is that something? That the That's how they said? appeared to him, so not to frighten him. Okay. Yeah, I thought that's probably what happens. Yes, they they appeared, they appeared to him in that way, so not to frighten him, but yet to communicate because he has a very interesting mind and he thinks in a very unusual way, and they they like that as well. So, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Sakira, you there? I am. I'm still here. Thank you. Can you see? Um, we can. No, she cannot. It's uh, a bug in the program. Next time we'll fix it. Not oh, there. yes. Okay. Can't you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I know. I'm sad about that. <laughs> but, Lakesh, I have two questions. Um, is it possible if a man and a woman want to donate DNA so that they can create... Uh, like a be part of like a parenthood for one hybrid child, two uh, male, two different DNAs in one hybrid child. Is that possible? They are working on a program based on something Max has suggested to the colonies for something of that nature. Yes. If you I can answer. No, I, I know genetics a little better than Lakesh. Yes, it's even possible in human terms. It's not even in. Uh, Basically, they will become possibly not parents, but something like grandparents, or something between parents and grandparents for this child. So it will be like, yes. you can have uh, three or four parents of the same child, it would be like, uh, it's, it's pretty easy even in human genetics. Yes, yes. it is possible. Okay. That would yes. be awesome, thank you. Yes. And my other question is this, um, since I made an application to visit oh. the colonies, I had some activity around me from different no, which groups, but since they're nothing, so I'm wondering, do I still have an aura of fear around me? Do they not come because of that, or is there another reason? It's not exactly fear. It's... There is some insecurity within you that relates to alien cultures, because uh, since you are experienced with alien cultures on your own planet being that you were in other countries and living there and coming back, you feel that perhaps you might not fit in as well as you would like to. And do not fear about that. But let me also tell you this. It takes so much time for them to decide on the individuals they want to take because what they do is they come down to the planet they visit but yet they observe for a period of time before they take anyone because they want to observe your habits the way you speak to others your connections to the world they were only taking people that they know that will be able to handle the situations that they will run into when they come into a galactic situations. They do not want to have you be frightened by reptilians or they do if if you meet other species, they want you to be able to be 
able to be courteous in a way that they teach you so that communications can be sound. So they do a lot of observing first. And this takes time because they do it in Earth time. They don't do it in any other time but Earth time. And you would say to them, why are they so slow and taking people? Well, this is why. They are observing and, t and making sure that these people will fit in for what they are being taught. They also, they want to make sure that you can be taught and that your, your devotion to um, the leadership that you will meet will be intact. You must be a leader and a follower. So, these are things they look for. Do you understand? Yes, Lakesh, I do. So you are being observed now. After your visit, there will be a time of observation before they make their decision. Mm. Okay. Thank you. I have one more question, if I might. Yes. Um, I'd like to know why we don't hear back from any of the people who've been on the colonies, because I think we need that validation once in a while. And um, uh, do they get too scared to say anything because of the um, military industrial complex or men in black? Or no, it's not that at all. It is that they have an information level about what is happening that is far higher than anyone on Earth has an information level of. And they are not allowed to answer these kind of questions. So they sort of hold back m meeting and letting people know that they know these things because they're afraid of the attention they will get and all the questions and badgering they will get because their information level is very high. They have a very high information level, and they are not allowed to share that part. They are allowed to share, however, that they have gone but some do not because okay. of the things attached to that. Well, so. I can understand them not publicly announcing that they've been on a colony, but even to Max or somebody more private, Max, uh, that they hear that they've been there, it's, we haven't heard back from anyone I, that I, I know. Th of, anyway. I think that they, Max has heard back from some, have you no, two? No, no, no. Please, anyone who have visited the colonies contact me or Sophia or anyone from the south. There is Just someone, know, there is someone, there are two someones on your site all the time that have visited the colony. There are two. So that people, are, please let us know that you have been there. We need that. Validation. I know who they are, but I cannot tell you. They have to tell you. Tell them. them. Some. Can you tell I, them? I'm telling them right now because they see the videos. Excellent. I have a little Excellent. announcement. Sifira, thank you for the for the wonderful question. I, yes. It's a burning question every time. Yes, you please, please, thank please, you. please if you... Here, please take your phones and if you have an internet connection, a smartphone, make it on flight mode because it interferes with the microphone. Also, the other thing is... Fourth dimensional energy, when when they had come back to Earth, their fourth dimensional level energy level is much higher, and it causes them to be more introspective, uh, more uh, self-helpy, if you will. Um, and they do not reach out right away with that introspection because it is not something that is earthly in some ways and so to be different in that way is sometimes a little frightening because they start thinking a little bit more alien yeah well if i had been if i was able to go to a colony and come back i would contact somebody jim or max who who have experience, or especially you, um, I mean Jim, and share that, so I don't know. I you don't feel like I would really need somebody to share this with once I came back, somebody I could really You trust. say that now, but you haven't been there yet. I know, I know. Thank you, Shakira, that's the way to go, yes. Anybody who goes to the colonies, promise you'll let us know. You say that now, but when you come back, you're different. So you must 
keep that in mind. You can even send us anonymous message. Just share something. We need validation. I must go very shortly. Is there any more questions? Uh, can you comment on Crimea and China? Basically, China announced that she also wants uh, it will also you know wants more territory. So Russia wants a territory. China wants a territory. So if Russia takes Crimea, China would uh, want to take some of Russian territories. Is it a real danger? How bad it is? These are your problems on your earth about greed and misunderstanding of what m the meanings of the earth are. Yeah, but you are in our galaxy. Yes, I am in your galaxy. If but you go wrong, then, you know. We all, our planets, have these kind of upheavals and uprisings and greeds and wantings, and it's for different reasons than you might think. So, I... I know that for sure that China and Russia want the same thing for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but they both feel that they're very right in what they want because they feel that they can handle the situation better. Better. But what it is come down to is that they both want to be mother-father over an area that they look at as a child. So, but in a different way. One wants to teach the child how to be more like them, and the other wants to control the child. So, as parents, you can see how countries act like parents in some ways. However, not in the same way with their intentions. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, it doesn't, but it's still a nice answer. Thank you. I cannot tell you um, anything political. Fine. But that was sort of political, anyway. Uh, there was a question of uh, one of our readers about your culture. Have you had a uh, history of wars like we did? Yes. Did Hundreds of years ago. And even sometimes what you would call a skirmish may happen, but it's with telepathy. Let me under, let me underscore that telepathy has much to do with peace, because when people are in contact with each other and know your intents, one to another, you will be able to root out those with the bad intents and find out why this is happening why there are disagreements and 99% of the time you will know what is wrong and how to fix the problem. This is the way of telepathy. And so that way we do not have much war or conflict. There are disagreements with intellectual thoughts. There are disagreements with physiological and DNA and questions of intellect and information as you have. However, it is not an angry an angry subject. It's not an angry interaction. It is merely an interaction of questions and answers of how you feel and how you don't feel. Or did that make sense? And this way, we are able to not have wars anymore. We know we are connected with telepathy. And telepathy is a bondage to peace. A bond to peace, not bondage. Bond to peace. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, I didn't speak to you a long time about myself. Do you have any news? I'm in a very confused state right now. Do you have anything which you can help me with? Your confused state, yes. Hmm, where to start? There are things, you are letting outside things rule your temperament. Yes. <laughs> you are letting things get in that should be staying out. 
So what I would suggest to you is this. Whenever th- something like this is happening to you, you take some deep breaths, some cleansing breaths, and blow out those angers, blow out those confusions, blow them out. You say, that won't do anything, but it does. What it does, there is toxins all through your body. Not great amounts, but some. But when you blow out these toxins, it helps to clear out some of the emotional damage as well. Some of the spiritual confusion, because it's like a mist over your spirit. You don't need that. You need the clarity of the spirit. You need the clarity of thought. And as you blow out with intention to blow out those things that might cover your harshness or or cover your soul or heart or body or mind, you blow them out and then after you do a lot of blowing out, take time to meditate for five minutes. Five minutes of nothing but pure light coming in. Five minutes of nothing but pure love and understanding coming in. Five minutes of poetry that you love, 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 love. Five minutes of wonderfulness. And you know what? You will find that your spirit, that your actions, that your chakras have been renewed to some point. Thank you, Lucky. Did you have one more question? I wanted to know if some of us came directly from the stars a very long time ago. Some of you did directly come from the stars a very long time ago. Mm-hmm. And that's all I will say. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was another question, very related. So we have, many of us have Pleiadian heritage from Middle Ages. Uh, that's what you said and others confirmed. Now the question is, did these Pleiadians come and lived and married on Earth and lived human lives, or they were just visited, or was it pure genetic injection? All right, let, that is a long story, but let me tell you this. Do you know your myths about Thor and myths about those who come to Earth and uh, place a helmet on someone's head hmm. and uh, have hammer, Thor's hammer? These were actually objects from outer space, from different alien cultures that were not meant to be used the way earthlings used them. There were things placed, like kings, a crown is placed on their their head, correct? Yeah. That came from alien culture. What they did is they placed something on someone's head and they became more intellectual, became more um, emotionally aware of their surroundings, were able to communicate telepathically with the aliens around them. And that's what this crown did. It actually made their brain work so that the communication between them and aliens were possible. But it came down through the ages that the crown is a a sign of authority. Well, yes, because at one time it was the sign of the person they chose to communicate with. So, and that made them a great person because it, it made them a leader, it made them intellectual, it made them understanding, it made them wise in the sense of tele, the telepathic communication between them and others. So, yes, so the question was, did these Pleiadians leave them on us, or they just experimented from outside? They experimented from outside, and there were some instances where they actually stayed. Like in my case, I have Pleiadian heritage. Did they actually come here and married, or they had a fair out in space, or they just did ex- injection through genetic means? Your case was injection. Uh-huh. I have couple of lines, one from father, one from the mother. Yes. Both of them were just hybridization program, injected DNA. Yes, at, yes. And it was like half Pleiadian hybrid at some point, or was it even higher percent? 
You know your percentages. They're quite no, high. No, not me. Them. Uh, five generations ago, they were like almost full Pleiadians. Yes. Still, it was a genetic injection. It wasn't... Um, yes. Like a... It was a genetic injection. And that the reason for that was... They wanted to, it's for a controlled experiment. They must know exactly how much DNA they were using and what parts of the DNA they were using. So they wanted to control that. So injection was the only way for control. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, one of my friends here is half Pleiadian. His father is Pleiadian. Yes. You know him, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, he met him. Uh, yes. So his father, was he on Earth, marrying a human woman? We don't want to romantic. They, we, want, we, don't, we don't want to be... Yes, there are, there are occasions when Pleiadians and humans are so attracted to one another, yes. Was it the case? Yes, in that case it was. Was he living on Earth? Yes, he was. So he went from fourth dimension to third dimension, or he remained the fourth dimension? In, any any time anyone comes to Earth and is able to be seen there in the third dimension. So he was staying short periods, or was he like longer? He stayed for a short period the first time. He, but he had interactions with this woman. Uh -huh. Their interactions were so interesting to him that he came back a second time, uh -huh. and he stayed. And he stayed. And he stayed. He can. The aliens can physically stay on Earth. They can. Did he have to reduce his All life? races started in the third dimension. You must right. understand that. Right. I mean, very, well, I can't say all, but very few have their beginnings in the fourth dimension. Most have their beginnings in the third dimension, moving up from, from creation. The third dimension was, creation was the third dimension. So, your third dimension is is where creation happened. And so many, 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 many species were born in the third dimension and moved to the fourth dimension when they had the ability. So the Pleiadian is capable of staying on Earth without technology? There are other aliens able to. It's very rare that they do, but they are capable. Is they find alive? That I cannot tell you. Uh -huh. So they didn't need to use any technology to produce a child? That is a long story. He had to do some changes in his physiology before they could mate. All right. So, yes, there was changes he made by permission, and they thought it was fine. I have to go now. I appreciate all your answers. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye, Laini. Goodbye, Sophia. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.
Hello. That's Whoa. a child. That is William. No. Who is that? That's your child. William. Excuse me, I had to realign. Right. Welcome. Thank you. I have news from the colonies. Thank you. And this is only the news that I have. All right. That the colony number one has taken on 15 telepaths. Wonderful, thank you. This is the highest amount of telepaths. They have seen and have been involved with from the human race. This has taught us many, many things. How diverse your cultures have become. And how diverse your thought processes are as well. It is amazing to us that without telepathy, how many different directions the mind can go. But with telepathy, how they unite and become unified in many ways, especially the ways of which are positive. Negativity seems reduced in telepathic relationships due to the fact that you actually understand where the other person is coming from in their thought process. So therefore, we have found that these 15 have enlightened us. Yes, we have our telepathic abilities for many hundreds years. But these new telepaths grow quickly into a positive frame due to their connection to one another and to aliens. We have much hope for humanity this way because negativity has gone down 27%. That is very, very high, very effective. We are very pleased. Therefore, I just wanted to come here and tell you that there is much hope for your planet to survive. Thank you. Um, these telepaths, how long did it take, does it take now for them to learn telepathy? Depending on the individual human, it can be months or weeks. How? high that they start an ability. Would a normal human it be able It would appear to? that the children have the highest form of telepathy because of their inter innocence and not being blocked by doubt or taught to fear or taught to not believe in it. So therefore they're more accepting and can learn much quicker, much faster. Did any children get in trouble for their telepathic abilities and for their alien experiences of this 15? Unfortunately, yes. But we are working with them to help them understand where they are in the human reality. How many of 15 are the children? Six. Thank you. Are any of 15 uh, purely human or are they all hybrids? There are three that are purely human. That proves that humans have hope. That is what we said. Yes. Uh, are these telepathics, uh, are they all, do they have to see each other to be telepathically connected? It is most effective when they are in each other's presence. However, they can detect some 
forms of telepathy when they are not together. It is very weak in some cases. Can you speak to human spirits, discordant human spirits? We are not allowing that at this time. But they would be able to. They would be able to in some ways, but we have not taught them the correct procedure. Would they be able to speak to Jesus and other higher spirits? No, no, not to the direct God figures. Uh, are some of them knowing each other on earth of this 15? No. If they were on earth, would they be able to use their telepathy? Or they, do they have to be in the colony for that? They can use it on earth, but we ask that they be very careful. It is not as strong on earth because they are not with other telepaths. When a telepath is with a telepath, their telepathy becomes greater because they can read and receive. Whenever they're just reading and not receiving, it becomes a different scenario. It's a different, a different feel, if you would, would if you would want to call it that. It's a different understanding when you're just getting one direction. This 15 going around possibly would find other telepaths on Earth. They would sense other telepaths. They are sensing many things, yes. So they didn't discover any more telepaths, natural. I did not say that, but I said that their telepathy wasn't as strong. Are they flooded with negativity because they are more open? In some cases, depending on the individual and what they're surrounded by. Are they able to turn off their telepathy at will? They are able to reject it in the sense that they can reject negative invasion. Thank you very much for your answers and thank you for your visit. Much blessings. Hi. We didn't see you. We didn't sense you for a while. <laughs> it was a long session. It was over about an hour. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> I need to bring water. Just yeah. Okay. Do you need some hands? Do you need anything? No, I just need water. Yes, hands they leave water. me very thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> they talk too much. <laughs> they talk yeah, a lot. It was really awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Safira. Thank you. Was that William Liney? I can't hear you, but that was, I, was that William? You wanted to give him a reiki, do that. Oh. Uh, yeah. Would you like some? Oh, sure. I never turn down reiki. Janice. Okay. Here, let me just get past the plant here. So you're a trans mm. channel. A trans channel? Yes, Could you are, yes. Yes, that means your ectoplasm leaves your body so that theirs can come in. Yes. Okay. You are careful, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. But I can I uh, can see some things, and I can hear some things. Because they ask me, um, if they don't know something, they'll come to my consciousness and use the way that I speak to say something, because they can't uh, translate it properly. So that when I hear that and see that, they ask me if that was William, and I said most likely. Just have they because that was one of the things that I did see was I saw William on the screen, okay. and I said they said is that William and I said yes I think that is. I said he would be the younger of the two boys, so he was having fun. Oh yeah, 
yeah. Yeah, he's, um, that's him. He's, he's cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> he can see himself on here as well. I think that's probably what it was. That's why he's poking his tongue out. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Sifira, can I put the camera show on your face? Oh, not Sifira. Uh, sorry. Lining. Yeah. All right. Do you mind if I put you on camera? No? Um, no? All right. It's fine. I, I, I remember. Oh. Yes, you didn't want publicity. It's fine. Can you feel energy? Mm -hmm. I, I, I had some... Uh, so, uh, for wow, those that who feels have children, good. crystal children... Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit of... Uh, I have a little bit of experience stuff. with mine. Oh, uh, good. First is, I'm thanking them. Uh, you know, the tradition is you, you so ask them to good? thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Keep I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I said it feels good. Same, okay. same to them. Yeah, the All right, again, about crystal children. Um, they come here for experience. It's one of the things. They, uh, they really... You know, at least my child, he wants experiences. And I understand he does something which is completely irrational, but he wanted to be taped to the wall like Jesus. You know, obviously not nailed, but at least taped, using duct tape. And I thought, what a weird desire. And, you know, my first was fear. It was yesterday, but, you know, have you been experienced? Have you had experience being taped to the wall? And he got I mean, it was, you know, he could untape himself, but for a few seconds he was happy feeling, hmm, I'm taped to the wall. And, and it's like that. You know, he comes, he wants to try everything. Now, the other, I have, we have four other children. Three are mine, and one is my wife's from other marriage. So, so none of them is of that kind. And this one, you know, he wants to experience this, that, and that, being tied, being, you know, all sorts of things, and trying everything. And Questions he asks are, he's thinking on really high level sometimes. Sometimes he misses it completely, but 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 uh, many things he, oh, that's how it is, that's how it is. And, you know, I drive somewhere, I miss the exit, and he have never been there. He says, hmm, father, where are you going? And say, oh, oh, yeah, I missed the exit. So he has that supernatural knowledge, which I don't, or which I, you know, is blunted. Um... Uh, Pushing, you know, pushing, pushing hard. Um, I, I explode and I force him sometimes, but, but really, I think a big. He needs to feel loved and he, he needs to be touched. So Reiki is really helping. Uh, he loves Reiki. He always also, you know, he would hurt himself intentionally just to come and be, 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 be healed and be. Receive the love in a physical way. I mean, do do you know Reiki? Yeah, my sister. Yeah, do it. You know, especially you know, going to bed. Now, now we have every every night we learn it on Reiki share. In addition to Reiki, we get foot massage. We get a cream and a, a foot massage, and it's very easy. And as I start doing that foot massage, you feel what is more pleasant. You ask what is more pleasant, what works better. There are some acupuncture points on the foot. On the hand, it's like right here. On the foot, same thing. That that is the point, which is very the most important point of all acupuncture, all acupressure points. So you massage that on on the foot. Also, you massage behind the heel. There are two deep places. So every night, all my family except dogs receive the foot massage. So I go, and you know, for them, it's so they're so used. They lay down and they ask, and then the kids ask. Balbad, Balbad, uh, what's that word? Um, Father, why don't you ever spoil us? And th th that's during the food massage, you know. <laughs> if, if that is not spoiling, what is? <laughs> so, so physical contact is important, and love and physical. And, uh, you know, the anger, uh, how do, basically, the whole culture is about anger and control. How do you... Uh, limit your anger. Obviously it's, it's there. Basically, take a breath and the anger in, in a sense is uh, being in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Anger is, no, do it now because it's dangerous. And you can just realize, I have another minute, I can take a step back and say, what do you want and why do you do that? And, you know, set a context first and then kind of Argument: Why? Why do you want him to follow? Basically, rationale, 
you know, I do that because of love, or that's a tradition, that's how normally we do that, I want you to learn that, so, so then he have, has to follow the, 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 what you want sometimes, but, but in many cases, his position is equally right, because he has his own rational, and very often his rational is not rational to us, but it has deeper meaning. And otherwise, and, and he speaks to animals, and I respect that, and I always you know, ask him, what, what do they think, or tell them that. Wow. So, so that is, you know, I, I, it's, it's not always 100% right. Sometimes I, I think he, he, is, he, is, uh, he misinterprets things, but, but still. Uh, you know, many more things about um, helping him to understand how to deal with mainstream cultures. And, uh, lots of card games, uh, other games teach kids how to lie. I think it's a very important knowledge skill in mainstream culture. How to, you know, how to talk to a police, how to talk to a teacher. We have to teach them that in a positive way. Yeah, that's a tradition to lie. We say, you know, the food was good when it was terrible. I mean, that's a tradition. We don't call anybody <laughs> fat because it's a tradition, you know. There is a lot of uh, Pleiadians are not like that. They would tell you right away that you're fat. <laughs> All right. So that just, you know, uh, a lot more. It, it's a skill. It's it's a skill like, like any other children, but um, they come here for, for a purpose and uh, they have additional support from from above and uh, and there are bigger than us in many cases than us here but we still are we are from earth so we have a lot to offer uh anything else uh, Sefira, i wanted to answer your questions about hybridization you asked several more questions about yes. hybridization what do you yeah. want to know i know a lot well, yes no, people can uh, mix their dna even human scientists can mix dna's from multiple individuals right. and, and and make a child. There were f you asked several more questions about hybridization, I just don't remember which ones. Oh, well, no, that was basically it. If, uh, if myself and another man... Well, yes. Did you say another man? <laughs> uh, another woman? All right, that's fine. I mean, yes. No, if myself and a man uh, would like to be parents... To oh, all right, family, all right. Or, or two couples, two people, let me be politically correct. If any two partners, no matter which male female, would ever wanted to be a, um, you uh -huh. know, a parent to a hybrid child, could they both donate their DNA? That was my question. All right. Yes. Yeah, just just for general education, basically we have spiritual heritage and we have DNA heritage. These are connected but different. So spiritual is you can be a Pleiadian in a past life or many past lives, and you and you're here on Earth. So. And you also can be Pleiadian through genetics, and these are two different lineages. Yeah. Um, and other, otherwise, the classical genetics is that two parents give their uh, DNA to a child, and the child receives typically 50% of each parent. And scientists believe that it's at random, but obviously it's not so random. I think uh, angels, spirits, and as the soul have a saying when when in the process of conception, they have a saying which genes from which parent to take. So it sort of can be controlled from higher dimensions. But at the end, they get, uh, the child gets about 50% of each. And from, from grandparents, they inherit about 25% of each. Exactly 25% of each grandparent. Of all four grandparents, they get 25% of each. Now, when we talk about alien DNA, ah, that was somebody else asking, and that was a question to our alien friends was if we get aliens, you know, say 8% of alien DNA, does it detract from our parents' DNA? And I don't know the answer. Obviously, it can be done in many ways. I know that genetically we are about 98% rel related to mice. Mice have about 98% of the same DNA, at least on gene, gene level. Between the genes, there is so-called junk DNA. It's, it's different for mice. But so in, in this junk DNA region, which is not so-called junk, in non-coding DNA region, there is a lot, uh, a lot of information that can be alien and it can be uh, hybrid and so on. So, so we don't know. Um, that is a good question, how this hybridization is done, and I, we hope that aliens would, uh, uh, would answer those questions. Is there anything else we need to discuss? <coughs>
Are we almost done? Yes, I, I'm good. I just got a Reiki treatment, which was really lovely. Nice. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you those people that um, know uh, Reiki, uh, Takur, you know Chokurei? Yeah. When uh, Takur was showing me some of uh, their Reiki things, and Choku Rei was slightly different. It was it was the same symbol three times, except for the third time it kept going. And it goes seven to twelve turns for a long lasting energy within the, the body. So I just wanted to teach you that real fast. That's interesting because the first symbol that I received outside of Reiki was a seven tiered symbol. Yep. And that I used the Tibetan Daikimyo as one of my master symbols, but I uh -huh. primarily use a seven-tiered spiral for amplification or detraction. So thank you. Yeah. I'm looking for the rest of the language. I know it's out there. Yeah, it is. And that's seven to twelve, seven to twelve cycles. That makes sense. Yep. Thank you. So, and that was one of the things, Takur showed me a lot of different moves, but that one's very effective. Very, very. It really increases the energy going in. And it, it moves real quickly through the body, so. We'll talk about that afterwards. Okay. I wanted to ask what actually is this Reiki and what are you doing? Oh, oh Reiki? Yeah. Reiki is energy healing. It, it uses the energy from the universe, your hands, Mother Earth, whatever energy is around, pure, clean, wonderful energy. And it goes with your energy and it goes into the other person and mingles with their energy to help them heal. Do you have a better solution? You know, I think it's complicated. It's like a uh, spiritually driven universal life force energy, but to simplify it, with, simplify it without dogma, it would be the Holy Spirit running through you to bring about the highest and best good for the person that you're working with. It's a channel that comes in through your axitonal lines. It comes mm -hmm. up from the earth. So the channel, this is basically what we're doing. We have to be clean, you know, and clear. Uh, we remove our ego. And then the, um, not only does the energy come through, but then our spirit guides and our ascended master, those who work with us specifically, they need our physicality to help move that energy. Just like the right. aliens, when they come here, are stuck in the polarity of Earth in that third dimensional construct that we are currently in. Um, they work with us too. But it's been around, some people believe it was, uh, Reiki was designed with the planet and that uh, when we were wiser, like in the Lemurian times, we laid hands, we taught our children how to balance themselves energetically, which we will do with our young boy here because that's the answer. Um, so we used to live for hundreds of years because we knew how to take care of our energetic bodies and now is the time to remember how to do that. So Reiki mm -hmm. is a very good way to start understanding things that are beyond you in a very understandable way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Jim, how about you do give a blessing? And uh, we stop it here. Okay. Here. What blessing do you want to go out today? I don't know. Well, it give, me a, give me a topic. <laughs> topic clarity. I'm confused. No. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, first, I just want to praise and thank you, God, the most high spirit, the most high light in the universe, the essence of love and good and charity and all that is positive. We just want to thank you and praise you and give you glory and ask that you would help us now. <coughs> and just be with us for clarity, for understanding, for a light on our path, for a movement forward in our lives to become part of a great, uh, greater world to connect us together so that we can know the light even better. We love you, we want to understand you more, and we want to understand ourselves more. So Lord, we just thank you and praise you for all that you do, for all the things that you have done. And even in our hard times, we want to just remember how to be positive, and how to pull ourselves into the light and follow it and make others aware that they don't have to be as down as they are. So, um, thank you. Thank you, thank you. My, my major praise is that we are here and happy.
and healthy. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank I will you. stop the recording now. Goodbye. Yes. Um, Sefira, I will speak to you just in a second and, uh, and line. Just, just stop in the recording. Bye, everybody.